Is it worth playing Atari 2600 now? I mean, worth it may not be the right term. Is it fun still? It's really gonna depend on you. But my experience with the Atari 2600 has been, uh, that's the first console I ever had growing up. And I had a blast, it was fun, stupid fun. But then when the NES came out, things changed. I got an NES eventually and those games blew me away. The 2600 got thrown to the side, traded in, sold, whatever, to just not really be thought of again. It's definitely a, I mean, at the time it wasn't thought of. I still think of the, the 2600, but those games just weren't fun anymore. They were so primitive. And it's been very difficult to go back to some of these games, but the historical importance is there. And Atari 2600 is one of the easiest consoles to play. You can emulate these games on any variety of devices, not a very, uh, you know, power hungry system. It's very easy. Your mom's vibe, freaking Raspberry Pi, PC, it doesn't freaking matter. Like if you have a device from the last like 20 years, 30 years, it can most likely emulate 2600. There's tons of options. And the one thing I'm always fascinated with is when cartridges are still being made for old systems. And the 2600 Plus came out. I did a video on it right when it came out, unboxed it, tested it, and all that. And I was waiting on these cartridges to come in. Eventually, I did get them. Just haven't had time to take a look at them. That's what we're going to quickly do today while I rant and ramble about 2600 and Atari. But uh, this is another way to play games. But this is more of like a museum quality, like history piece, in my opinion, with all the documentaries, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, goes beyond the 2600. The Atari 50th Anniversary Collection, well worth getting on any console that it's available for uh, and that you have. But today, we're gonna check this stuff out. So we got Berserk, you know, Atari's still making these cartridges, I find is neat. This is the Enhanced Edition. Uh, there's something to be said about like, you know, getting a, a cartridge for an old system, um, be it new or a used copy or whatever, but when a company like continues to make these games, uh, for a system that, you know, <laughs> is like 30, 40 years old. It's freaking crazy, man. And I'm fascinated by it. There's nostalgia behind it. Having these physical uh, gaming items is kind of fun, man. If it's not breaking the bank anyway, there's some things out there that are just ridiculously expensive in order to, to, to play your games. But uh, this is an option here. Interesting. Okay, you get a little slip cover. No manual or anything in there. What the hell? Like, did... I, I really don't remember... It's been so long, like opening an actual, like an original release 2600 game, but did they have manuals? I don't freaking remember, dude. It's the first console I had and I just really don't remember uh, much other than some of the games that I played. I mean, I'd play a, uh, Montezuma's Revenge is one of my favorites, uh, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron, uh, you know, lots of arcade ports, but there we go, that's really cool. Look at that cartridge, little sleeve for it. I like that. I think these games are like 30 bucks each or something. I remember when when uh, I was established with my NES and I still had some uh, 2600 games that it was like, yo, um, I'm gonna trade these in. I remember taking them to like a little Ma and Pa store and they were like, yeah, I'll give you 50 cents for that game. And it was like, screw it, dude. I'm not doing anything with it. But we got Berserk there. We'll boot that up uh, on the 2600 plus. We'll rearrange in a second to Try these games out. And then this is a new game, I think, Mr. Run and Jump. So let's let's open that up. I'm already kind of jacking up this box. Mr. Run and Jump. Oh no, Leap the Dog has begun wandering towards the Dark Realm. Okay, we gotta save that fool. But all right, let's get this one out. This one, the four and games in one cartridge was kind of cool. It comes with paddle controllers. Again, no manual or anything. Like I said, I don't really remember much with the 2600 experience of opening an original game. Uh, but there's Mr. Run and Jump. Like I said, this is cool, man. Let me smell it. Mmm, yeah. Smells good. There we go. Label peeling up right there. But overall, decent looking cartridge there. So we got those two. Um, I know every once in a while, like this thing, like, it's brand new, I haven't even taken it out, but it's sealed on the top, but not on the bottom. Okay. The paddle controller. Do I have to open it from the top to get the cartridge? I don't even know. Ugh. 
There it goes. It's kind of like stuck in there. Uh, so this is a floor game in one. You get Breakout, Canyon Bomber, Video Olympics, and Night Driver. And you got to change the little uh, dip switches for whichever game you're playing. It shows on the front which is which. But yeah, you know, these games, a lot of them are very primitive. Um, hard to, you know, get back into for a lot of people, for myself as well. Paddle game came with the, the dual. Oh, that actually feels pretty good. Um, but I do have this Hyperkin, uh, what is this, the Ranger? This has like the paddle and a normal stick in one. I think I think you uh, change it to paddle mode right there to use it in paddle mode. But okay, let's, uh, let's lower this and try that out. I mean, yeah, these, these little beeps and bloops are definitely nostalgic, man. Like it's, 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 you know, taking a step back in time. There's value in playing, playing these games, but I very rarely have the desire to, but this is cool. It's in my collection, man. Oh my God. You son of a bitch. All right, I, I suck at Berserk, dude. I can't, I can't help it. There we go. We're getting these fools. I remember playing like Indiana Jones, freaking E.T. I know E.T. gets a, a bad rap, but you know what? Like E.T. was actually uh, had a lot going for it compared to a lot of other 2600 games. Uh, but okay, enough of Berserk. Let's turn that one off, put in Mr. Run and Jump. Kind of look like E.T. right here. Can I extend my neck? Okay, a little hippity hop action. Is that a, oh, I just died. Oh my. All right, so don't touch anything. Why are those flickering? the power of the Atari 2600. Oh, we gotta like, uh, you gotta get that jump perfect. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, let's try the paddle games. Uh, where'd I put it? Uh, we got breakout. So that's all the uh, pins on, right? I think so. Or the switch is on. Yeah, this paddle on this, uh, I, I've had this for a while, but uh, it's been a while since I've used it. <laughs> but it, it feels decent. It feels decent. A little breakout action. I mean, this game still holds up, dude. But maybe not every 2600 game. Really, you know, nostalgia is a bitch, man. Some people who grew up with this, like I did, don't really have too much desire to, you know, play these games again. Some people, like, that's, they live by this, man. And it's fine either way. We're all going to be different. Some people get really mad and I say, yeah, I don't think 2600 holds up much anymore. Uh, but that's just my opinion, dude. Uh, share it or don't. Don't matter. Everybody's got different experience, different feelings. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, this is one interesting way to play Atari 2600 games in the year 2024 uh, with brand new cartridges, which I think is really neat that they do this. Um, stuff like this I would buy from them, not those crazy like $100 cartridges they do. Uh, but yeah, interesting. Let me know what you guys think. Did you grow up with Atari? Can you still play these games? I mean... I'll play them for a video like this here and there, uh, but mostly when I when I want to like revisit Atari, I do go to this collection because it's just so well put together. You got Jaguar games, 
uh, arcade games, 2600, you know, uh, 7800. You got tons of stuff on this. This is really awesome, but this feels like going back in time for real. Yeah. Bye.